Welcome back, Rich Minds. It's your boy Reno coming back to you with another video. And today's topic is going to be five reasons they hate that you proved them wrong. Yes, sir. Let me say a lot of for the chosen ones in the back. Listen, y'all. They hate the fact that you proved them wrong. And I'm about to get deep into every single reason of why they hate it. But let me say this, y'all. Somebody was in your circle. Somebody was at your job. Somebody was in your family, your friendship. And you proved them wrong. They wanted you to fail. They didn't want it to go through. And you proved them wrong. Okay, and so we're gonna go ahead and get deep into this video, y'all. But first, y'all already know how we do. Y'all make sure y'all leave a thumbs up on this video as well as subscribe to the channel. And not only that, drop in the comments and say I was right. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments and say I was right. Now, the first reason they hate that you proved them wrong is gonna be this chosen one. You made it through. Yes, sir. Let me say it louder for the people in the back. Listen, y'all. You watching me right now. You made it through. Okay? You made it through that hard situation. Yes, sir. You made it through that struggle. Yes, sir. And you made it through that hardship. Now, whatever that was, y'all, it's subjective to you. Okay? Maybe you went through a divorce and you made it through. Right? Maybe you was going through a breakup and you made it through. Yes, sir. Maybe you was going through a job shift and you changed jobs, got a better one. You made it through. All right. Maybe you was going through some type of struggle whenever you was a single mom and they thought that you wasn't going to make it. Guess what? You made it through. Somebody drop in the comments and say, I made it. Oh, yeah, baby. You made it. And so I want you to realize something. You made it through. You proved them wrong, okay? They went all against the grain. They said that you wasn't going to ever make it. They thought you, they thought you wasn't going to never be nothing. They thought you wasn't going to have the courage, the strength to do anything. But God said different. <laughs> God said different. I want you to realize something, y'all. People hate when you prove them wrong. Because us as human beings, y'all, in human nature, we want to be right so bad. Okay, we just want to be right so bad, and whenever another human being prove us wrong, we just got the uh, face, right? We got the uh, face. We just can't stand the fathom the fact that we was wrong. Somebody drop in the comments and say it's okay. It's okay to be wrong sometimes, y'all. It's okay to prove somebody wrong. It's okay, all right. And see, you happen to be on the flip side of that. You done prove them wrong. And they hate that, y'all. So right here in the scripture, in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it says this right here, chosen ones. No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. Let me say it one more time, y'all. Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it says, no, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. Now, what are you saying right now, Reno? God is going to make sure you make it through. God is going to make sure you conquer. God is going to make sure you defeat anything in your pathway. Okay? Why is that? Because he loves you. You his child. Somebody drop in the comments and say, God's child. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments and say, God's child. And so, Reno, what are you clarifying? What are you saying right now to me? All I'm simply saying is, y'all, people wanted you to fail. People wanted you to stop. People, you know, they couldn't stand the fact that you made it through that situation, that hardship. And guess what, y'all? You end up proving them wrong, all right? They prey on your downfall, literally. Like I told y'all in another video before, people prey on your downfall just as well as people prey on your uproar. See, people prey on your downfall, too. You got to understand and believe in that. It's a lot of people who are praying, saying, man, I hope Tyrone don't make it. Man, I hope Keisha don't make it. I hope they still stay right here with me. I hope they still in that same situation. Man, I hope they don't make it. But guess what? You made it through. And there's nothing that they can do about it. Oh, yeah. And so with that being said, y'all, we're going to go ahead and get to the next one, which is number two. Okay? The second reason they hate that you proved them wrong is going to be the chosen ones. It worked. <laughs> Let me say it one more time, y'all. It worked. Okay, Serena, what worked? What, what you mean? What happened? Okay, so let's just say you started this business. You know how I go, y'all. You know where I'm going with it. Let's just say you started this business 
And as you were starting this business, you went through a lot of trials and tribulation, right? Over and over and over and over and over again. As entrepreneurs, y'all know how it is, right? Let's just say you've been trying out for this job over and over and over again, right? You may be working at McDonald's. You may be working at Checkers. You may be working at a warehouse. You know how it go. And you keep going out for this job, but you're not necessarily getting it. And they just saying, man, just give up. Just give up. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe this is a little far-fetched for you. All right? What are you saying right now, Reno? Well, it actually happened for you. It actually worked for you. You end up getting that job. Or you are in the process of getting that job. That business idea started working out for you. Or maybe it's in the process of working out for you. All I'm simply saying is, y'all, that idea that you had, it actually worked. Okay? I got two examples of this, y'all. So the first one is Tyler Perry, right? Uh, when Tyler Perry, you know, first started doing these plays, y'all know how, how it was. Medea go to jail. Medea go to jail. Um, Medea family reunion. You know, all the, I, I can do bad by myself. The actual plays before he started doing movies. Well, you know, Tyler Perry had to sacrifice a lot of stuff. That man was living out his car, right? And so what I'm saying is, y'all, uh, he went through so much, so many trials and tribulations to where his own mom said, well, baby, you need to give up. Now, let me say this, y'all. That's a prime example that sometimes even your own family members won't see the vision. Somebody drop in the comments and say vision. See, sometimes your own family members won't even see the vision. Sometimes your friends, people who you grew up with, they won't see the vision. But see, one thing that happened was you proved them wrong. Why? Because it actually worked. They tried to convince you. See, some people come off with bad intentions. And some people come up with just the intentions of not knowing what they do. Like, they just don't know. They didn't see your vision. God gave you the vision. He didn't give it to them. And so they may be like, man, look. Look, man, I, I don't want you to keep hurting yourself. I don't want you to keep going. I don't want you to keep going through this, man. Just give it up, right? Because they don't see what you see. Once again, God gave you the vision. He didn't give it to them. And so what are you saying right now, Reno? That situation, that thing, that job, right? Even that woman, that man, okay, that you finally got after pursuing or, a, a, or after going after it, right? Chasing your dreams. It's in process. You actually attained it, okay? It actually worked. It actually worked. That family member who's been saying, they ain't going to work. You need to stop doing that. Try something else. Try something different. Get a job. Do this. I mean, all the negative talk, doubt for naysayers. People who don't believe, people who can't see. They never did anything in their life and they're trying to tell you what to do. And it actually ended up working. The second example I have on this one as well, y'all, is acrimony, right? I'm not going to get, you know, deep into, you know, the relationship part and the romantic part of it. But I just want to talk about, you know, the actual man, okay, who had this dream and he kept going even though his battery wasn't working. Y'all know what acrimony is. Even though his battery wasn't working, he kept going. He kept pursuing. He didn't stop. He kept building on his dream. Even when he said, hey, man, we're going to put a restraining order on you. We're going we gonna to file a, a harassment case on you. Why? Because he kept sending his work. He kept sending his tape. And they start looking at it like disrespectful. But he kept going. And so all the people who was around him saying, man, you need to stop. Get a job, man. Get a job. And so one day. He went to Prescott, and Prescott gave him an offer. And that's when he realized the thing that he had was valuable. And so all I'm simply saying is, y'all, it actually worked for you. You're going to get that offer, or you already got that offer, whether it's a job, right? Whatever the case is for you, you're going to get that offer, and it actually worked. Your way worked, okay? Your way worked. Somebody drop in the comments and say, it worked. All right. And so with that being said, y'all, I have a supporting scripture on this. And so with that being said, y'all, I have a supporting scripture on this. And it says right here in Proverbs chapter 16, verse three, it says, commit to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Let me say it one more time. Louder for the people in the back. Listen, y'all. Right here in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, it says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. 
And so all I'm simply saying is, y'all, if your mama said you can't do it, you're going to do it. If your daddy said you can't do it, you're going to do it. If your friend said you can't do it, you must do it. Why? Because God already wrote it. Somebody drop in the comments and say, God wrote it. Yes, sir. Somebody drop in the comments and say, God wrote it. So all I want you to understand, y'all, is that that plan that God has for you, it has no choice but to work. I don't care who said that it wouldn't. When God said it will, you don't need another opinion, okay? And so with that being said, y'all, we're going to move on to the third reason you proved them wrong and they hate it. They expect it for you to fail. Oh, yeah, y'all, this is a real big one. They expect it for you to fail, right? You ever had that family member in your family? You know, that friend that's in your circle, right? They really ain't friends. They really ain't family. But that's what they come disguised as. You got that person around you, and they always talking like they can't stand when you win. They always talking like it just boils their, their skin, boils their blood. When you say, man, I did good, right? But the sad thing is you happy for them. You love when they win. You appreciate their accomplishments. But you can't get that same energy to be reciprocated when it comes to them. You got that person around you. Or have you ever been around that person, y'all? Drop in the comments and let me know below. But all I'm simply saying, y'all, is this right here. They expect it for you to fail. But guess what? You proved them wrong. That jail convict, when you got out, they thought you was going back to jail, brother. You had you another baby. They thought that you was going to fail, sister. But look at you, you prevailing. Somebody drop in the comments and say, I won. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments and say, I won. They don't like the fact that you actually succeeded. They don't like the fact that you actually won, right? And so right here, y'all, in Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5, it says this right here. It says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Let me say it one more time, louder for the people in the back. Listen up, y'all. It says right here in Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5, not only that. But we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So what is what is it saying right here, Reno? What he's saying is in your in your bad times, in your hardship, rejoice because he's gonna bring you through that. He says, I know. That hardship, that suffering, it's going to produce that endurance. It's going to keep you going. I know that endurance that keeps you going, it's going to produce character. Why? Because you're going to understand how to walk into any room. I don't care if your mama died, grandmama died, right? Kids acting up, you just got fired. Whenever you walk into any room, that character going to shape and mold you. They won't know what you're going through. He says that character produces hope. Hope that things going to get better. Hope that things will shine. Hope that things will rise. And hope does not put us to shame. Why? People, are you still hoping for that? You still having faith in that? Let it go. Once again, they expect it for you to fail. But what happened, Reno? Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. All right? And so all I'm simply saying, y'all, is this right here. God has given you the Holy Spirit. He has given you the power and the anointing to continue to keep pushing. Those who thought that you was going to fail, they lost because you still prevailed, right? They thought that you was going to fail. They thought you was going back to jail. They thought you was going to go back to Rodney, right? After he cheated on you and beat you up the first time, they thought that you was going to go back. But remember, y'all, the only time you should look back is if you're looking to see how far you've come. Okay, and you've come too far to go back. And so what I want you to realize is, y'all, they was banking on you to fail. But that check bounced. Somebody drop in the comments and say that check bounced. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments and say that check bounced. Okay, and so with that being said, y'all, we're going to move on to the fourth reason. They hate that you proved them wrong. It's going to be this, y'all. They can no longer relate to you. Okay, let me say it one more time, y'all. For the people louder in the back. 
they can no longer relate to you. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just get directly into this, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. That's like having a happily divorced woman and a happily married woman in the same room, on the same job, having some of the same conversations, all right? It's gonna be a conflict of interest. You know why? Because one woman is happily divorced. She loves her single life, right? She loves being promiscuous. She loves dealing with multiple men. She loves this lifestyle. She loves it. Or maybe she just loves being by herself, right? And then you got this happily married woman. She loves her husband. She loves having somebody. She loves going to dinner with him. She loves doing certain things with him, right? She loves having that family. She loves it. And so... If this woman, this married woman, hang with this happily divorced woman, one of the two things going to happen. Either she going to want her life or either she's going to want to be motivated to have a husband as well as her. Okay. Or this woman is going to be influenced by the happily divorced woman. Why? Because you are what you hang around. And so what happens is, y'all, if you have this happily divorced woman and you have this happily married woman, the moment that her man do something wrong or they have some type of confrontation, something go wrong, she can't wait to get on her ear and say, Gary, you just need to leave him. But what are you saying right now, Reno? The moment she say, no, nah, I'm not leaving my man. I ain't doing that. She just proved her wrong. How? Because she thought that her influence was going to be strong enough to pull her away from what she loved so much. But it didn't work. She proved her wrong. And so she hate the fact that she got proved wrong, okay? And so that's going to cause them to separate and cause division when really they shouldn't have been hanging around in the first place. Work is work. All right? So what are you saying, Rita? What does this have to do with anything? All I'm simply saying is chosen ones is this right here. They can no longer relate to one another no more. See, it was all good as long as her husband was messing up. Why? Because she thought that she had a friend. Come to this happily divorced life with me, baby. Come over here. You're going to love it over here. And she's saying, no, I got a husband. I love it over here. Okay? It's a conflict of interest, y'all. It's counterproductive, and it won't work. All right? It won't work. So all I'm simply saying is, y'all, you got to understand they hate the fact that you proved them wrong because they thought that you was just like them. They thought that you was going to go back to doing down bad and dirty. They thought that you was going to go back to your past, but you proved them wrong. And so I want you to understand that people were not like that, y'all. Okay? You proved them wrong. All right? Somebody drop in the comments and say, I told you so. Oh, yeah. Make sure you drop in the comments and say, I told you so. And so, y'all, we're going to go ahead and move on to the last one, which is the fifth reason. They hate that you proved them wrong. And it's going to be this, y'all. You are a reflection of God. Oh, yeah, y'all. Let me say it one more time for the people louder in the back. You are a reflection of God. And so, Rena, what are you saying right now? They thought that you were a mess up. I'm going to just go ahead and be real, y'all. They thought you was a mess up, right? They thought that you was Cheddar Bob on 8 Mile, straight up mess up. You shot yourself, right? But guess how God worked through you? He started putting his anointing on you. He started putting his spirit on you, okay? You already made in his likeness. You already made in his image. The difference between you and them is that you know who you are. Somebody drop in the comments and say, I know who I am. See, they don't know who they are, right? And they want you to be in the same box, the same bubble as them. You know who you are, and you know whose you are, and they can't stand that. See, you proved them wrong. You proved them wrong. It's just like seeing somebody grow up, right? You done seen them. You was like, oh, man, he going to be a drug dealer just like his daddy. And he come out, start doing this thing, and he become a businessman. Or oh, you going to be a stripper just like your mama. And guess what? She start coming out, doing her thing, and she become a business owner. What are you saying right now, Reno? They tried to predict what you was going to be, when you was going to do it, and where you was going to do it. But one thing about God, y'all, he can't lie. God can't lie. And so right here, y'all, in this scripture, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 27, it says this right here, y'all. It says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea. And the birds in the sky, over the livestock, and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. 
So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. What are you saying right now, Reno? I want you to realize who you are. You proved a lot of people wrong. They thought that you was going to fail. They didn't know that you would prevail. They didn't know that you had God's backing. Oh, yeah. You got God's army surrounding you, okay? You proved them wrong. They tried to predict your future like there was God. Listen to what I'm saying, y'all. You are made in the reflection of God. And you proved a lot of people wrong because they thought that they knew your future. They thought they could predict it. But it don't work like that, y'all. It don't work like that, y'all. And so, as a recap, y'all, I want to go ahead and give y'all all the five reasons they hate the fact that you proved them wrong. Okay? Understand this, y'all. Internalize this. And let me know in the comments if you resonated with it. All right? So, number one, you made it through. Number two, it worked. Your plan, it worked. Number three, they expected it for you to fail. Number four, they can no longer relate to you. And number five, you are a reflection of God, okay? And so I hope that this message was able to connect with you, okay? I told y'all this is a on-time prophetic and divine message, okay? And so with that being said, y'all y'all already know how we do. Y'all make sure y'all check out any one of the links in my description. Check out any one of my books. That's Eight Stuff to Self-Publishing, a successful book, Rich Mentality, Traumatized by Love, as well as Fairly Unequal. Also, be sure to check out any one of my memberships. That's my YouTube membership, as well as my Patreon. And don't forget, my Social Influence course just dropped where I'll show you how to build up your social media platform as well as become a self-published author so you can leverage that expertise, okay? I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Keep a rich mentality. Peace. What's good, family? It's your boy, Reno. Check this out, y'all. I just dropped my social influence course, okay? Where I'll show you how to build up your social media platform as well as become a self published author. Understand what I'm saying, y'all? If you want to leverage your expertise, okay, you got to publish your book. But not only that, if you want to get popping and build your community, you got to build up your social media platform. And so I put that all in one course, okay? And so all you got to do is go to the link in my bio, all right? And drop in the comments, social influence. If you want to build up your social influence, click that link in the bio and we're going to get you popping. Keep a rich mentality.